All right, just going to do a video refuting the Roman Catholic papacy's unscriptural cultism because the Roman Catholic Church has all the hallmarks of a cult. They have essentially one of the biggest hallmarks is taking away the word of God from people. You know, back in the 1200s and back in the Middle Ages, they tried to persecute the word of God and prevent people from reading the scriptures themselves because the word of God contradicts Roman Catholic heresies. It's that simple. But let's go through some scriptures that totally destroy this unscriptural cultism of the Roman Catholic papacy. First of all, the Catholic papacy violates Peter's outline for the conduct of elders. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Neither being lords over God's heritage. You're supposed to be a servant to the flock. If you're an elder or a bishop or, or a deacon, you're a servant. You're not some kind of a dictator like the Pope is. So the whole hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church is blatantly unscriptural in the fact of, of them trying to be this, this lording cult-like authority over the over the flock. Next point is that the Catholic papacy and their cultism is actually rebuked by Jesus Christ himself. Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45. Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45. But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chief will be the chiefest shall be the ser shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay. Again, this is he's talking to his apostles here, and he, even he's telling them, you know, the kings and of the Gentiles and the rulers, they exercise lordship, but it should not be that way among you. But what do the popes do? What do the, the priests do? They are doing exactly what Jesus Christ condemned in this passage here. They're being this, this, they're lording over the people. They're exercising lordship over them. They're essentially just the usurpers of Christ's authority. That, that's been a common attribute of the old harlot of Revelation 17, 18 throughout history. Uh, the harlot and also her Protestant and Muslim children is usurping the authority that belongs to Christ alone. It's that simple. But Jesus Christ said, you know, it should not be that way among you because the Catholics make it seem like their church is the kingdom. Well, they're being like a king, kingdom right there by exercising lordship. But Jesus Christ condemned that again. It shall not be that way among you. It's that simple. So there's Jesus Christ himself rebuking the unscriptural cultism of the Roman Catholic papacy. Next point is that the Catholic papacy, like I said, usurps the authority of Christ unto herself and follows the path of Diotrephes in desiring to have the preeminence among the brethren. 3 John 1, 9 to 10. This, this perfectly describes the Pope right here. 3 John 1, verse 9 to 10. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. That's exactly what the Pope does, or what he thinks he has the authority to do. He's no different than, than uh, Diotrephes. Next point is that the papacy claims apostolic succession, but ignores that Paul never exercised the unscriptural cult-like authority that the popes do. And not just that, they claim apostolic succession, but most of what they, they uh, practice and, and believe in is completely unapostolic. It has zero apostolic connection whatsoever. Uh, first, or sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. 2 Corinthians 1, 24. Not for you that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. Not having dominion over your faith, because it's Jesus Christ who is the foundation and rock of the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4, Ephesians 2, verse 20 to 22, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. See, these, these men, see, Roman Catholicism, all it is is just a man-centered, man-exalting false religion. See, they, they, they take away the authority that they, they attempt to usurp the authority of Christ in their own little minds uh, unto themselves. It's, a, it's, a bunch, it's just a bunch of man worship when you get down to it. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 4, 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. 
Can that be said about the Pope, that he's a servant? No. In most cases, you have to bow before him, you kiss him, the world leaders have to serve him. You know? So they claim apostolic succession, but if they were truly the successors of the apostles, they would be servants. They would be in samples and, and basically serve the flock and take care of the flock, not rule over them like they do, like, like the Pope does. I'll put it that way. So just some more examples of how the Roman Catholic papacy is not only uh, completely contrary to apostolic doctrine, but also rebuked by Jesus Christ himself in many ways. And like in Mark chapter 10, verse 42 to 45. And also Pope Peter, as they, you know, they call him Pope Peter, rebukes the Catholic papacy in 1 Peter 5, verse 1 to 4. It's that simple. Roman Catholicism has all the hallmarks of a cult because it is a cult. It's just the old harlot of Revelation 17 and 18 trying to usurp Christ's authority unto herself. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.